This is the injury report presented by NYU Langone Health. The Yankees are the first team in baseball to get to 10 wins, and they've done it without Garrett Cole and Jason Dominguez, who've been out with injuries, as you guys know. So in this week's injury report, we're talking with Dr. Michael Alea, professor of orthopedic surgery at NYU Langone Medical Center. Sir, you sound important. How you doing today? I wish I was important. I'm doing good, Brandon. How you doing today? Uh, I'm great, man, especially when we get to talk Yankees baseball. And uh, there's a lot of Yankees fans waiting, patiently waiting, to hear what you're about to say, especially about ace Garrett Cole, who they're waiting for him to return to the mound. He's been dealing with right elbow nerve inflammation, but he did make 25 light throws from 60 feet on Monday. And our beat writer, Greg Joyce, said that he's going to be out for at least another six weeks. So... My question to you, why is the team holding him out for so long? Well, I think the key here, especially for ulnar nerve irritation for a professional thrower, is that you really want the symptoms to go away. You want those symptoms to be completely abated when the, when the pitcher is making their way back to the mound because that could impact their velocity, that can impact their accuracy, their precision. And also, if their pain gets worse, then you might think a longer rehab, potentially having three to four weeks out to maybe six to eight weeks out or 12 to 14 weeks out. The other thing you're trying to prevent here is you're trying to prevent any kind of long-term damage. When a nerve gets irritated, if you keep bothering it, it could potentially have more longer-term effects, such as muscle atrophy or persistent loss of sensation. So we want all that inflammation to really calm down. And once it calms down, then Cole can go back to throwing light tosses, short tosses, long tosses, Subsequently, more rapid pitches, different pitches, changing the throwing mechanics, et cetera. So what's he going through right now? Is he having to just deal with the pain? And if, let's say, they did rush him back and he went out there and was throwing, could it lead to something worse? And how can he easily re-injure it? So it could perhaps lead to something worse. I think the verdict would still be out in terms of how long it would take to have permanent damage. If he had something that was causing compression on the nerve, like a cyst or a bone spur, then that compression can lead to more long-term effects. That you might not be able to come back from. Mm. So what we really want to do is get all that inflammation out of there. That's what causes pain. That's what causes symptoms. For a pitcher, when they cock their arm back and get into that late cocking phase of the throwing arc, that causes a lot of stress on the elbow, a lot of stress on the medial elbow where that ulnar nerve sits. And the more you exacerbate that, the more you anger it, the worse the pitcher is going to be in the short term and potentially the long term. So they're doing the right thing by keeping him out. You want all that pain and inflammation to go away, and we hope that he can make a rather uneventful return to the mound. <laughs> You take your answer times what they're paying that man. Yes, that's the reason why they're holding him out right there. So let's talk about the next phase of his rehab, because I said he had the 25 pitches from 60 feet. Once he gets clear to start pitching, what's the process going to be like in terms of his return to the rotation? Well, I think that they're probably going to limit his pitch count when he first goes back to the rotation. You know, the last thing you want to do is put somebody back early in the season and overuse that arm and lead to something more drastic later in the season when we might rely on him a little bit more, like the playoffs or fighting for the playoffs. So it's going to be a progressive return. They might limit his pitch count when he starts. They might even change the number of days before the before the starts. Instead of doing three or four days, they might do five or six days to give him a little bit more time to rest. The goal here is to really make sure he's comfortable because if that nerve starts acting up again, then we have to restart the whole process from day one, which is what the last thing that we want to do. So, Doc, I remember when I tore my meniscus and had surgery on that when I was playing professional football. The doctor said my knee was fine. The knee is physically fine, but it was my mental that was holding me back. Do you think that Garrett Cole can get the okay from trainers and doctors, but could there be some sort of mental block when he gets back out there and his first piece of action? Yeah, I mean, that's a great point, and we always worry about that because – Half of this is getting back from the actual injury in terms of the physical nature. Then there's the mental and the psychological nature behind this. We always say that when somebody has an ACL tear or a meniscus injury, they're always a little bit fearful of getting back on the slopes, getting back to the court or the pitch, whatever it is. They have that in the back of their head and they're thinking, oh man, what can I do to prevent this to happen again? Or what if it does happen again? So they're always worried about that what if. 
Now, our hope and the hope of all the Yankee fans and the hope of the physicians that take care of the Yankees is that there is no mental block here. And Cole, I mean, he's, he's a tough guy. Hopefully he can come back from this no harm and be exactly what he was before this injury happened. I just worry about the money he's getting times the pressure from Yankees fans. That That's a lot right there within itself. Uh, let's move on because there's another guy that fans want back on the field, and that's center fielder Jason Dominguez. He had Tommy John surgery on his throwing arm last September, and he's already begun throwing from distances of up to 120 feet. Why has Tommy John become such a common surgery for baseball players? It's like ACL surgery for football players. Yeah, and you know what's the most probably one of the most common surgeries that are done on professional baseball players. And it's pretty rare that you have to do it on an outfielder or an infielder. Classically, that's been described on pitchers, right? Because pitchers use that arm 60 to 100 times every time they're pitching out there, and they're really changing the functional demands on that elbow. So on the inside of the elbow, close to where that nerve is that we were talking about for Garrett Cole, the Tommy John ligament or the ulnar collateral ligament sits there. And that's probably the most important stabilizer of the elbow. It prevents the elbow from opening up to certain stresses. And when you cock back all the way back, like we talked about for the ulnar neuritis, that causes a very, very significant amount of stress on that ligament. So we see it a tremendous amount, not just for professional athletes, but also for kids that are growing up. The more they pitch, the more strenuous activity they're doing across that ligament. They're stressing that ligament constantly such that it's easily terrible, all right? That's the last thing that we want. Tommy John surgery is very, very prevalent now because of sports specialization. When little kids start playing just one sport and just pitching for their whole lives, that puts the elbow at risk. So they're wow. playing one sport, constantly stressing that elbow and exceeding the functional capability of that elbow. It's gonna stress the ligament a tremendous amount and that's why it tears. That's why we see it so often in these pitchers, less so in outfield players. So what's his rehab process like? And you kind of answered this one on why do position players return from this surgery so much quicker than pitchers. But I guess I'll pivot to, is this going to change his throwing motion? Should that be something that, that the team and trainers should be worried about, as well as the athlete? Well, yeah, well, I'm sure they're going to be looking at this. I'm sure the athletic trainers and the therapists and the physicians are going to be looking at the throwing kinematics and how he looks. You know, where, where is the energy coming from? Is it coming from the shoulder? Is it coming from his mm. elbow? Does he have the proper torque in his core? Is he mobilizing his body the way that a thrower should be mobilizing their body when they're trying to toss the ball 120 feet or from the outfield to second base or from the outfield to the pitching mound, et cetera? Now, thankfully for an outfielder, they have to throw hard a lot less than pitchers do. Okay. All right, so maybe they'll throw five to ten times with a lot of velocity per game, as opposed to a pitcher that has to not only throw a fastball, but also change their mechanics to throw a breaking ball, a curveball, a slider, etc. All those pitches change the function, the functional, excuse me, all those pitches change the torques that the elbows feel. Position players don't have to do that. So we hope that their throwing is going to be pretty much easy. So when he returns, what's going to be his biggest concerns? And you talked about how the surgery affects his throwing, but how is it going to affect his swing? So, you know, we hope that it doesn't affect the swing really at all. And if this is his throwing arm, then, you know, you would imagine that this is going to be their back arm when they're batting. And when somebody's batting or swinging, they produce a lot less stress on that ligament, particularly if it's the back arm. So not something that I would be too worried about through the batting motion, much more about the throwing. I don't think that this is going to affect his batting at all. It's kind of like Shohei Otani almost, right? Yeah, I mean, Otani is a guy, that guy does it all. <laughs> all right, well, Doc, man, we appreciate you coming on. We got to get you back on uh, pretty soon because we're, what, one thing we're seeing, there's a lot of injuries going on around New York City when it comes to professional sports. So uh, thank you for taking your time out your day. No, the pleasure is mine. Thanks for having us.